So in today's lecture, we discuss about uh, the velocity distribution and also the most important, uh, the geometric properties which are used in all the problems in Opancha. So I start with the velocity distribution and then I take into the geometric proportions. So these calculations, geometric calculations are very, very, very important. Without them, you will not be able to solve even one problem. Let me straight away take you to the whiteboard. So velocity distribution in a channel section. So this is the our topic. So first thing is uh, the velocity of flow at any channel section is not uniform. The velocity of flow you take at any channel section at any channel section is not uniform. Why? Why this is? The reason being, number one, the first reason is the free surface existence. Free surface existence. Second reason is basically uh, the frictional resistance at the boundary. Because when you are talking about channel, channel sides, channel bed are all basically the some soil or whatever it is. So the frictional resistance at the channel boundary. This is second reason. These are the main two reasons. These are main actually. Apart from these two also, there are some more reasons which we call it as uh, the geometric proportions, geometric proportions of the channel. Geometric proportions means the what you call it as the width to depth ratio. All these we call it as geometric proportions. Then if presence of any bends are there in the channel, presence of bends in channel, that is also one of the reason basically uh, in channel alignments i call it as rather than length because channel alignments so these are all the reasons for non uniformity non uniformity of velocity distribution these are all responsible for the non uniformity of velocity distribution how the velocity distribution is going to be. If suppose I take this is a channel section. Let us take a rectangular for explaining sake. So this is the channel section. Please see how I am drawing also. Suppose this is up to here. The water level is there. Then if I observe how to the thing is suppose this is the channel bottom so here basically because of the frictional resistance if i want to draw the how the velocity distribution will be along the vertical along the depth if i take it so this is the depth of flow y if i take it how it will be is uh, this is how it is going to be Right. This is how the velocity distribution bottom. It is not zero. There will be some velocity at the bottom also. And this is where the maximum velocity. This is, of course, free surface velocity. Right. This is how the velocity distribution is. 
So what are the various things that which we should know actually? So first, if in a channel section, where the maximum velocity occurs? This is the first question. The maximum velocity occurs at a distance of 0 0.05 y to 0.15 y from free surface. From free surface. So this is the first question. The maximum velocity will not occur at free surface and maximum velocity occurs at 0.05y to 0.15y from free surface. Why two values I have given basically the range only I have given the reason being because why the maximum velocity at the free surface is not there is because of the air resistance. The resistance at the free surface is mainly responsible for not having the maximum velocity at the top. Therefore, it may depending upon that air resistance, uh, the maximum velocity may occur at 0 0.05 just below the free surface or a little bit below the free surface. So this is what you should know first. Then next, uh, even if, I, if you want me to draw actually if along the vertical section, if you take it, I can draw the contours also how the velocity contours will be if I take it. This is how the velocity contours are going to be basically. So the thing is here basically it will be around 0.2 max V max. This is here 0.4 V max. Here it is 0.6 V max like that. If you move towards up, this is 0.8 V max maximum of that. This is how the velocity distribution contours will be. Next second question is mean velocity. How to know? Because the, the important things are in anywhere when we are working out the velocity distribution on which points we work. First thing is where the maximum velocity occurs. Suppose if you are asked where the maximum velocity occurs in pipe flow, naturally at the center of the pipe the velocity is maximum because at the boundaries the velocity is zero. So naturally, so in the pipe flow the velocity occurs at the center. But whereas here in the open channel flow, because there is no, at the top, there is only free surface because of that, actually the, um, the maximum velocity occurs a little bit below the free surface. That little bit is 0 0.05 y to 0.15 y from the free surface. That is first thing. Then second thing is, so V max occurs at 0 0.05 y. 2.15y from this word is very important from free surface then what is mean velocity mean velocity basically if you measure the velocity at 0.6y from free surface That is what we call it as a, a basically the mean velocity. This is called as one point method. One point method means what? By using one point method, we can calculate velocity such that if you measure the velocity at 0.656y depth, if depth is 2 meters, 0 0.6 into 2, 1.2 meters from the surface whatever velocity you get that is the mean velocity but that is not accurate so in order to get accuracy two point method has been introduced what is this two point method you measure velocity at point two y from free surface you measure velocity at point eight y from free surface these two are measured from free surface Y is measured always from top, right? 
so you may you are measuring you are taking two points the velocity at two sections previously how much we one point measure only velocity at point six y so at that depth you have taken the velocity and you are claiming that as mean velocity but as that is not more accurate now what i am doing is two points i have taken the velocities at point eight y depth from the free surface suppose depth is two meters point eight into two 1.6 meters from the free surface. Then again, 0.8y. 0.8y means basically 0.8 into 2, 1.6. 0.2y, 0.2 into 2, 0.4. So you measure the velocity at 0.4 meters. You measure the velocity at 1.6 meters. Then you take average. V mean is equal to V 0.2y plus V 0.8y. By two. If you take average, that is what we call it as mean velocity. So these are the two ways uh, how we calculate uh, the mean velocity and maximum velocity and how the velocity distribution is. Why non-uniformity of velocity distribution in open channels? So these are the four points you should remember. First, velocity distribution is non-uniform. Reasons being the frictional resistance and existence of free surface and basically the bends in the channel alignments and geometrical proportions. These are the reasons. Then second thing is where maximum velocity will occur. Maximum velocity occurs at 0 0.05 y to 0.15 y from the free surface. It doesn't occur at the free surface for the reason being that at the free surface air resistance is there which really opposes the motion of fluid. That's why the maximum velocity does not occur at the free surface. Third point is what the mean velocity. Mean velocity you can measure, you can calculate by two two methods. Number one is one one single point method in the single point method what you will do you take basically any velocity measuring device what is the velocity measuring device you can ask me the velocity measuring device or current meter current meter is one velocity measuring device pitot tube is another device but most prominently being used is current meter you take any of these two devices actually this is the Take any of the devices basically, then measure the velocity at 0.6y from the free surface. Then that itself is the mean velocity. That is one point method. Now you want to accurate method, then you do take two at two points the velocity. At 0.8y depth, you take it. At 0.2y depth, you take it. Take the average. That is two point method. So this is how the velocity is done. So that part is over. Now I will go into the next topic. What are the various geometric elements? Of channel section. So we are taking only defined geometrical sections in here because being undergraduate course, I take only defined one. First one I take rectangular. Please focus on these points because in the exam, the problems will be on this only. If, if these geometric elements are very, very crucial for calculating. So I am taking a rectangular section where the depth of flow is Y, bottom with this thing. So first channel I have taken rectangular. For rectangular, actually the width of the channel, I have taken it as B and depth of flow as Y. What are the geometric elements I require? Number one, area. This area is called wetted area. Wetted area. Wetted means how much area is wetted. Wetted area. Area is equal to B into Y. This is first, the first geometric element. The second geometric element always is wetted perimeter. This is represented by P. Wetted area, wetted perimeter. So if you see B plus this side Y plus Y. So it is equal to B plus 2Y. Tomorrow you should be able to tell openly this, not again calculating it. Area B Y, fitted perimeter B plus 2 Y. Then hydraulic 
radius. This is also called as hydraulic mean depth R is equal to A by P. That is BY divided by B plus 2Y. This is 3. Then fourth one, top width. Top width means the width at the top of the water surface. This is represented by T. And that is here in the rectangular, it is nothing but B. This is 4. And last one is hydraulic depth. Hydraulic depth D is equal to A by T. So it is BY divided by B. It is equal to Y in rectangular channels. So for any channel section, these are the five we should remember. Number one, wetted area. Number two, wetted perimeter. Number three, hydraulic radius. Number four is top width. Number five is hydraulic depth. So in this basically, R is equal to A by P, D is equal to A by T. These are the things. So one channel section I have completed. Then I take the another channel section for your understanding. So whatever is there for you in the syllabus, that only I am taking it. I am taking it trapezoidal because most of our irrigation channels, if you see, all of them are trapezoidal channel sections. So this is the water surface. So this depth is Y. This bottom depth is B. So this is what we should understand. So taking this actually as the base. And now you should be given with this. What is the slope of the sides? So the slope of the slides, we take it as one vertical to z horizontal remember the first thing is uh, bottom width is b bottom width b trapezoidal bottom width v depth is equal to depth of flow y side slope these are the three they should give one vertical to z horizontal that you should remember so these are the three given so now i will try to calculate actually because i know what i have to calculate already i told in the thing so first when i am calculating area first calculation is wetted area So what I require for trapezoidal naturally half into some of the parallel sides into the distance between the two. Some of the parallel sides is this is one parallel side. This is the other parallel side. So some of these uh, I know bottom thing is B. What is the top thing? So this uh, central portion is B. What is this portion if this is Y? Naturally, how much it will be Y? This is one vertical to Z horizontal. So Y vertical to how much it will be Z Y. Similarly, on this also, how much it will be Z Y. So therefore, what is the top width actually? If you see here, what is the top width? Top width is equal to B plus Z Y plus Z Y. So B plus 2 Z Y. Right, bottom width is B, top width is B plus 2ZY. So, what is the area? Half into, right, B plus B plus 2ZY into the distance between the two Y. So, it is half into, if I bring basically, if you take it, 2B plus 2ZY into Y. So, 
two two cancels actually if i write it uh, it is b plus z y into y this you should know it i am telling again starting calculation it will be very difficult to solve any problem then naturally what is wetted perimeter what is wetted perimeter so now for your understanding sake uh, let me call it as a this as b this as the d so what is wetted perimeter this is nothing but a b plus basically b c plus a d am i right right this is so now already a b is known a b is equal to how much you, you, they have given b then what is b c and b c and uh, a d are same So calculate, let us BC is equal to how much? So BC, you tell me. Now this is ZY, this is Y. So naturally this is right angle. So it's a right angle triangle. So what will be the sides? Actually, if I take it sides, so this is Y, ZY, this is Y. So what it will be actually? Square root of Y square plus Z square Y square. Am I right? So if I bring Y outside, so it will be y into square root of z square plus 1. So that is what the side is. So bc is equal to y into square root of z square plus 1. So therefore, well, total perimeter is equal to vetted perimeter p is equal to ab is b plus y into z square plus 1 plus y into square root of z square plus 1. So it is b plus 2y into square root of z square plus 1. This you should be able to speak. I am telling you again and again. Then let us go into the third thing. R is equal to, that is hydraulic radius. A by P. So A by P means A is equal to what we have calculated here itself. It B plus Z Y into B plus Z Y into Y. It is area divided by B plus 2Y into square root of Z square plus 1. This is R. Then what is thing top with the T is equal to already I have calculated top with the T is equal to B plus to z y already first initial itself we calculated then last one is what is hydraulic depth hydraulic depth is equal to a by t so a by t and b plus z y into y divided by p plus 2 z y so this is as far as the trapezoidal is concerned then even if triangular is given, you can easily do it. But I will take you into one of the most important thing is the circular channel section. Circular channel section. So circular channel section, please see carefully. So if you take this is the center, right? Center of it. Now let me take this is the water level. Right? So this is y. Next, first thing is let r is the radius of channel section. Am I right? Let R is the Y is the depth of flow. This is second point. So what is the angle subtended at the center? 
this angle subtended at the center this angle is 2 theta 2 theta is the angle subtended at the center so these are the three things i have so what i call it as this is a this is b center is anyhow o and bottom i call it as t right now once i one one after the other we will try so first thing before going for it is uh, what is a uh, wetted area wetted area is equal to how how to get it this is area of a d b o a this is basically a area of a d sorry a d b a for us this is not there a d b a how we will get this area area of sector a d b o a so this is the sector actually this is the total right minus area of triangle o a b this is area of triangle o a b so this is there are two things here one is sector other so how to go about it let us see first area of sector a d p o a is equal to basically how to calculate area of the sector it is equal to you all know angle subtended by basically 2 pi this is actually what i am doing is theta is in radians i am converting into basically the decrease base that's all so that is what i am doing into 2 pi that is why divided by 2 pi i put it into for sector area is pi r squared right then actually what is area of triangle o a b how we will calculate half into this distance how this distance how much is this distance actually that distance if i calculate that is first if i take it so the, if the total distance is r so naturally this is r right and uh, the then in that case uh, what this is uh, when total angle is th this is theta so what this will be actually this will what this will be and what this will be these two we will can so this is like this suppose this is the thing right this is how it is so this angle of is theta right and uh, we have measured this is r so what they are the other one these two things are so these two things are if i take it number one is what this is equal to r sine theta am i right r sine theta and this is r cos theta right half into now the on this side also this is the how the total is so this is r sine theta this is r sine theta so if i take the triangle what is the base 2r sine theta into what is the height r cos theta so if i can cancel it actually then what will be remaining r sine th r square sine theta cos theta this is the thing so finally now you tell me what is the area is the wetted area is a is equal to 2 theta by 2 pi into pi r square minus r square sine theta cos theta right if i two two i will cancel it actually so if i take it uh, then pi pi will cancel so what it is remaining is r square theta here it is remaining minus r square sine theta cos theta then if i take common actually r square into theta minus 
sin theta cos theta if i want to write this uh, so sin 2 theta sin 2 theta is equal to 2 sin theta cos theta therefore i can write it as theta minus sin 2 theta by 2 so this value you should remember right here also one point i want to clear it theta is in radians right and what is the conversion factor one degree is equal to pi by 180 basically radians or the other way is 180 degrees is equal to pi radians please remember the conversion factors also so this is as far as the first one is concerned so what uh, what is the area r square into theta minus sine 2 theta by 2 the next one is what is vetted perimeter vetted perimeter the vetted perimeter is nothing but actually the bottom one so if i take it perimeter you know already the equation it is 2 theta by 2 pi into 2 pi r because for the sector you know the uh, perimeter is to, uh, the angle subtended divided by 2 pi into 2 pi r whereas for the area is you have to find out the area of the sector minus area of the triangle actually so now it is 2 r theta this is second right then r is equal to hydraulic radius r is equal to a by b what is a by b r square into ma it is sorry theta minus sine 2 theta by 2 divided by 2 r theta this is 3 right then what is the other one which we require these are the main three things that which we require in the case of circular channel section a p r enough these three are most important actually then i want to tell you before closing this topic uh, there are two things up uh, what is section factor this is something which we come across while doing the problems or you can get it in quiz also what is section factor section factor is equal to section factor is nothing but uh, uh, it is uh, uh, when this factor defines the shape of the section shape of the section actually so we what is section factor means uh, it is basically a root d wetted area wetted area square root of hydraulic depth this is what we call it as section factor very important bit actually and in problems also sometimes they ask and similarly what is conveyance this is also second bit actually what is conveyance conveyance is equal represented by k it is equal to q by root s conveyance k is equal to conveyance k is equal to discharge divided by bed slope right so this is what the, the important things so here i stop this uh, this lecture and we take up actually what are the empirical equations uh, for measuring for uh, measurement of velocity and then followed by ultimately the discharge in the case of open channels so because we are having for measurement of velocity current meter and all but for computation how we go along the next class i will take up actually those things uh, how do we go basically with uh, uh, the determination of uh, equations especially for velocity distribute velocity and again followed by the discharge so here i will stop the lecture thank you very much for your patient listening thank you thank you very much like share and subscribe hit the bell icon 
for more updates.